Hi, today I'm going to demonstrate to you Gorm for Mongo. For those of you who don't know who Mongo is, Mongo is one of the upcoming NoSQL uh, database, databases. Um, it is a document store um, that stores, uh, stores data in a JSON-like format and supports MapReduce, uh, querying and so forth. To demonstrate GOM for Mongo, I'm going to create a Grails application first. We're going to call it uh, Mongo Demo. Wait for that to finish. So here we have my Grails application, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the Grails plugin manager inside SDS. Plugin manager, I'm going to look for the Mongo DB GORM plugin. I'm going to install that and I'm going to uninstall the Hibernate plugin for the moment. Click OK and wait for those to finish installing. With them installed, I'm going to create a couple of Grails domain classes. I'm going to write on the Grails to create the main class scripts. Um, we've got a person and a pet. So here I have my two domain classes. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give a person a name and I'm gonna say they have many pets. So now I have my two domain classes. What I'm going to do now is start up my Mongo server. There it is, Mongo is up and running. And now I'm going to start up my Grails application. Run it. With the application up and running, we can head to a browser. Currently I have no controllers, so I can go ahead and create those. So let's run create controller, person and pet. Right. So here is the pet controller. What we can do with this one is we can say static scaffold equals pet. Save that. Go to the person controller. Static. Here we see in my application I've got two controllers now, one called person and one called pet. I can come in here and create a new person. <coughs> uh, I'll give them the name of Fred Flintstone. And we can add them. So this is all using Mongo underneath covers rather than a relational database uh, and it's using the standard GORM API. In fact we can come in here, if we want to write a search function in here and say diff person equals person dot find, find button. Person 
Now if we go to my search section, there's my person. I can also use the regular Mongo API, so I can I can say def person equals person dot collection dot find one. This collection variable is just referring to the underlying MongoDB connection. Uh, let's make sure that I spell person correctly, and then I can render up person. There you go. And the reference we have here is a MongoDB object, which because it's just like a map. Uh, we can reference into the name there just as easily. So refresh the browser, we find Fred Flintstone. So you have both a, a high level API um, where you can execute things like criteria queries. Here's a criteria query for red. Or we, for example, we can query the pet domain class. We can say pet dot name like Dean no and type. criteria query. If we were sitting instead searching for a stegosaurus, I imagine we would get nothing back because we've changed the nature of the query. So this is full criteria queries on Mongo. Uh, the same thing works for name queries. So I can say static name queries equals Stegosaurus equals type Stegosaurus and now if we go into my person controller and we say pet dot Stegosaurus dot list we get nothing, as expected. So if I come into my pet controller again, and we create another steggy, stegosaurus, there it is. Come back to my search action. There we go, we found steggy. And that's using name queries, another feature of GORM. Thanks for taking the time to watch the screencast on Gone for Mongo. We hope you found it interesting and we look forward to your feedback.